This is a production of HBNDT.com, copyright 2008. How to calibrate an Epoch 4. Simple to some, hard to others. This will help you get along. Tools. An Epoch 4. Personally, it's one of my favorite instruments. Need a bunch of cables and a spare. Don't want to get stuck out there without cables. And enough transducers to do your job. Sometimes one, other times up to 20 different transducers to complete a project. And cow blocks. We're going to start with the basics, zero degree, using a step wedge, typical corrosion application, thin materials. This is a 1018 carbon steel. If you're on different types of materials, the velocity will change. Now we step into the Epoch 4, and you'll have to have a bit of an imagination with that. We're going to place the probe on a 10 millimeter step, and our screen is still blank. So we're going to go through the velocity, or the gain, mind you, and then we're going to figure out where we get a nice echo train. Bring the range down to 10 millimeters, reject to zero. Velocity is at 3240. We're going to set that at 5900. Zero to zero, angle to zero, thick to zero. Full wave, energy is low. Damping is at 50 ohms. Pulse echo, because we're using a single crystal here, so pulse echo is the technique to use. And I'm going to use broadband to start out with. And I'm going to get rid of that square wave. It's a totally useless thing unless you're selling an Epoch 4. Bring the gain down a bit. I usually like to have my echoes at about 80%. I'm going to range out to 25 millimeters so I can see two or more echoes. Bring my gate back and my second gate. I do a different technique here where I do an echo to echo between the two echoes and then what I have is only the velocity to deal with. This is the same thing that a 37DL plus or a thickness gauge will do. Once I get that determined at 10 millimeters I'll go to single echo and then bring that down to 10. And If that was too fast just rewind it and you'll catch on. So now I've got 10 millimeters with my zero offset and my echo to echo gives me 10 millimeters for my velocity. I'm going to tune in my sound here a little bit better and bring in my broadband and you'll see how that initial pulse dumps down. And I can measure down to about 1.9 millimeters without interference from the initial pulse echo. Now I'm just double checking my wedge. 2.5 with a single crystal, I'm accurate all the way from 2.5 millimeters to the top of the wedge at 12.5 millimeters. Because we have no V-path error with a single crystal transducer. We will, however, not have proper corrosion.